Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well guys, we're back for episode two in this new season. And Pat, we got a lot to discuss today. That's right. We got a lot of transfers, young Nats moving abroad, some oh, yeah. loan deals, exciting stuff, Austin. Yeah, and we also have a lot of strong performances to start the season from some of our players. So, uh, Pat, what do you say? I say let's get into it. All right. So the first player we want to talk about today is one of our fan favorites on our oh, show, yeah. and that would be Anthony Robinson. So, Pat, where will Anthony Robinson be playing his football this year? Anthony Robinson also will be playing his football at Wigan Athletic. So, okay. yeah, it's, I think it's a decent move. They were just, uh, we were talking about it, they were just promoted, right, up to the championship. So, yeah, um, yeah. again, just kind of a, a similar situation of being loaned out the last uh, season, if you tuned in for the first uh, season of Yah. That's just, right. Uh, he, he was a starting uh, outside back there, had some great performances. And that right. was at Bolton. Yeah, Bolton. Bolton Wanderers, mm -hmm. which is also in the championship yeah, last so, year and this and, year. <laughs> and they struggled a little bit at the end. But True. He, looked, he looked pretty good, and hopefully uh, this will kind of, you know, solidify him to a starting spot with this new team and propel him into the Everton first team hopefully one day. But we got a whole season. We got a whole season to, to go. That if that does happen. Yeah. And then uh, also, what's interesting, just in terms of the pecking order for Anthony, of maybe why he wasn't uh, staying with Everton, okay. was because, you know, they have that, that veteran, I believe we were talking about off camera as well. Was it um, what, Baines? Leighton right? Baines. Leighton yes. Baines, who's mm -hmm. been at Everton for. Oh, how? Forever, Forever. It seems, yeah. <laughs> and then they just brought in a new uh, Barcelona guy. True. And that's uh, Digne? Is that how you pronounce yeah, that? I, yeah. I think so, that's how you pronounce it. Something like that. Digne. But anyway, it, it seems like that'd be a pretty, that'd be uphill battle for the young uh, American back there, so. Yeah, that would have been yeah, tough that, to get minutes really this year. Tough. I so. wish he was at like a lower Premier League team, but again, I think mm. this is still a good championship. Is There's a lot of games there to be played, and Still can he's still young and you know fight for some minutes and hopefully we can just see him progress there. But that that move I think is yeah, pretty good. I'm okay with that, Austin. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, really happy when I saw it come out because, like you said, minutes are the main thing with Anthony Robinson right now. He's got to be on the field playing, and yeah. if he's not doing it at Everton, not going out on loan, then <laughs> you know he's not going to be progressing as a player. So I think it's a good move, good move for his career as well. Absolutely. Yeah. But also, we want to talk about another player that had an exciting move that we were waiting on it's for true. a little bit. Yeah, and, and we were uh, worried when we, we, we were, didn't yeah. hear anything about it. But. Yeah, but, uh, another one of Chelsea's alone army there. That's and that's true. known other than Matt Miazga. Ah. So, so Matt will be playing in Liga Ligue 1, Ligue 1. Yeah, yeah, in, like that. in France uh, for Nantes. Or Nantes. I, I don't know. We're, we're so bad <laughs> with pronunciations. But or Alejandro playing, Bedoya's team, right? Yeah, his old team. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, first thoughts for, from us where we thought it was a, a really good move. You know, Ligue 1 is uh, a really yeah. good league. It's a top Step five up. league. He'll be playing against some, some top tier uh, competition. And also he's got, uh, you know, a, I think he's got a, a good shot at getting one of those starting center back roles for Nantes. Too. They just have some because pretty strong backs there too, right, Austin? A few, yeah. They have like two uh, main center backs that they've played. Uh, or that they've had uh, for the past few years. He's played a lot of games for them. However, the the one center back looks like he's kind of played a little bit sparingly, um, like through the years. You, you were, we were looking it up yeah, earlier, were, yeah. and he's he's been at Nantes since uh, 2011. Yeah, 2011. And he's played only like 100 games or so, or a little over 100 games. Um, so that's not too much since 2011. That's uh, yeah, that's seven years and 100 games. So. We're hoping, you know, Matt Miazga breaks through. Um, the other really good center back on that team, or at least like kind of up and comer, although he's kind of cooled off a little bit recently, mm -hmm. was uh, Diego Carlos. So, uh, you know, that's the center back, in my opinion, that he should be paired alongside um, for, you know, the upcoming season in my book. Uh, but it'll be cool to see, you know, Matt in a, in a better league this year. It's definitely, definitely a step up from the Air Divisi. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to, to watch him a little bit more too this year because you know we can Finally. we can watch. We were trying to Ligue watch it uh, earlier and uh, it was on Bean, so unfortunately we didn't get that. But yeah, if anyone was able That's to, true, but yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It's it's a good move. We're very excited about Matt and can't wait to see what the the season uh, has for for Matt this year. Oh, yeah. So now we want to go to another player who's been kind of 
w you know, waiting all summer to see what his future holds, and that would be Emerson Hyndman. So Pat, oh, yeah. can, you, can you give us a little update <laughs> on where Emerson is right now? Yeah, so for uh, all you yas, uh, Emerson Hyman has <laughs> moved to the SPL, and that's none other than the Scottish Prem. Um, so again, just uh, kind of disappointing, to be honest with you. Uh, he's definitely getting to that, a little, bit. That, a little, yeah. little disappointing, just to that, that prime age where you know, he should really be developing and really pushing for some minutes for Bournemouth. And again, that, that's another team that's you know, bolstering their options. But uh, just to kind of go back to uh, a team that was actually just in the, the championship um, I think two years ago, so they were just you know promoted up in the in last Scotland. year in Scotland, yeah, yeah okay. for Hibernian there. So they finished pretty strong in fourth last year, and they're in the Europa League right now, fighting for a you know a spot yeah. in the standings. But uh, we'll see. Emerson Hyman actually you know got to play uh, for a little bit. I think it was like sixty something minutes. Yeah, um, I think so. This like past that. weekend. Yeah, right? this past weekend. So good to see him get on the field and. Again, I think this move, at least he's getting playing time, but I was hoping for, honestly, a little better move. I don't yeah. know what you thought, Austin. but No, I, th I thought the same thing, especially since he played at Rangers, which is a, you know, yeah. a big team yeah, in that, that same team. league. Like, I would imagine you know, he could maybe take a step up from that, but it's been now about two years since he's played for Rangers. So, so um, you know, time is uh, of the <laughs> essence, and it seems well like said. Emerson hasn't really <laughs> capitalized on the time he's... He's had, uh, maybe unfairly from me, because he's, he's been injured a lot. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what Heinemann does this year. Um, yeah, it was funny. Just a uh, side note as well. Preseason, he was getting some minutes, and he looked pretty good. I think he had, a, I think he had some goals or assists as well. But, again, I guess you know, you're funneling in a lot of young players at that time and kind of seeing where they were. So, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, update you on how uh, Emerson and Hibernian <laughs> does in the season. That's true, yeah. <laughs> And uh, we want to now move over to a player who is at the same club, has been very loyal very to this loyal. club. Another one of our, our guys where we really enjoy watching, and that would be uh, Lyndon Gooch. So, Pat, uh, how has Lyndon Gooch looked uh, to start the season for Sunderland? Yeah, Lyndon Gooch has looked uh, pretty well. I think all the Sunderland fans love him, just respect him for the fact that he has, <laughs> you know, been with them through this, you know, kind of, I guess, tough times. Tough times, exactly. Very tough. And he, I think it was uh, last weekend or two weekends ago, mm -hmm. he had a, like, a 94th, 95th uh, minute game winner, which is That's exciting true. at the Stadium of Light. And I believe he was the 12th player to ever have a game winner at Ooh. the Stadium of Light. So, That's a nice stat congratulations, right Lyndon. <laughs> <laughs> but also, this past uh, weekend, he had a really nice uh, darting run and beautiful kind of, I guess, what do you call it, like a chip ball over the back line there. Yeah, it was um, it was kind of like a, a weird through ball. Like, yeah, it was. Like kind of on a different angle than I've, I've really ever seen. But it, it was good vision and yeah. got the assist there. So it was great to see him. Uh, you know, again, it is a, a third division there in England. But it is True. great to see him hopefully <laughs> be that guy who can help revive Sunderland. Yeah, and it would be, it'd be nice to see, uh, you know, everyone rally around him and have a... <laughs> He hopefully will have a you know a spot on that team for for years to come. That's hopefully, true. and you know hopefully they do big things yeah. in the future. And speaking of uh, doing big things here, another cool. player that we are really excited to talk about. We're starting know. to get Start. really excited yeah. about. Yeah, are we jumping on the hype train? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Might be We're, too early. Yeah, maybe but, it's uh, a little too early <laughs> right now. But that would be uh, Emmanuel Sabi. So Emmanuel right now is playing for Hobro in the Danish Superliga. And to start the season in the first five games in the Danish Superliga, he scored four goals and has Ooh. one assist. So that's, you know, really good to see a 20-year-old uh, American striker. He might be 21 right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, was, a, was a player that uh, was on the U-20 uh, World Cup team this past year. Didn't really get too much playing time. Um, yeah, who do, you, who do you have a few guys ahead of him, well, right? Yeah, uh, he had Josh Sargent <laughs> well, uh, mainly in front of him, which, you know, you guys know you Josh got, Sargent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Jeremy Obobase, who uh, currently is at Portland Timbers right now, who hasn't looked great so far to start his, his young career, right. but uh, was a player that, that didn't really have too much fanfare coming out of, uh, you know, the U-20 cycle. Really? And, under the radar, you say? Kind of yeah, I would say pretty under the radar. You know, he was at uh, UD Las Palmas uh, in in La Liga or in Spain. I'm not sure if they were in La Liga at the time, yeah, at the time. when he was when he was there. But um, you know, that was a good team. Uh, has a you know probably a decent academy since they're you know in Spain and around La Liga oh, yeah. status. Um, so he was there for a period of time and then moved over to the Danish league to get some playing time. And um, yeah, he he looked good to finish the season last year. Had some, um, you know, good good plays, and I think he scored a goal or two. Yeah, um, I think he had some really nice goals. Yeah, we were checking on the Twitter true, highlights back then, but 
Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he started the season off very hot. Some of the goals he scored as well have looked, you know, they've been, you know, really nice goals <laughs> um, this year. So definitely one to keep an eye on, Emmanuel Sabi. Some people are calling for him to be on uh, some of these rosters Ooh, coming up yeah, in the fall. Coming up, guys. Which I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm willing to, to throw him on those rosters Ooh. just yet, just because, I don't know, he's, he's still a very young player. The Danish Superliga is very far down on the, the list of leagues that right. are, you know, top tier leagues. But, you know, Jonathan Mona is impressed in that league, and we're That's all kind of wanting to see him <laughs> on the U.S. men's national team, uh, you know, level uh, oh, yeah. or, or on the team to come up. But, you know, we'll, we'll keep monitoring Emmanuel Sabi, and we'll see uh, if he's a part of the U.S. MNT this, this fall. Let's hope. Let's, <laughs> let's see. Let's play the young guys. That's yeah, what we want. Play the you young know? guys. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, now let's move over to Sweden and talk about a player who's who's still playing very well uh, for right. his new club, and that would be Romain Gall. So, oh, Pat, yeah. can you can you fill us in on what Romain has done so far course, for Malmö? Of course, Yeah, so Romain actually uh, just picked up uh, another start, which is good because he was left out of a few uh, Champions League qualifier games. Um, but he picked True. up the start yeah. this weekend in, in the league action and got an assist, so... That's always hey, good to see, go. making an impact there on a, I believe he was on the, uh, the you know, playing like right mid or more as a, as a winger. And so okay. it'll be kind of interesting to see. It looks like Malmo's still trying to figure, you know, him out. And, that, you know, it looks like they're changing the formation a lot in the last few games that I saw. Um, so I guess they're, you can play Romain Gall in certain areas because he's pretty, you know, dynamic on the wings there or, you know, any kind of... And he's got good ball skills. So exactly. Kind exactly. of fit in, you know, a yeah. b- bunch of different places. So, yeah, it seems like it is a, it is a top team there. So they're, hopefully he can really break his way in and make sure uh, if they keep proceeding in the Champions League, that'd be great to have another, you know, American in there. Yeah. And it would give us, you know, some more uh, minutes to be able to watch him. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's so. true. And the Alspenska. I yeah. pronounced that right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, again, a another striker who is poised for big things we hope and has had a long uh, arduous journey but we're excited to see where it goes and uh yeah we'll keep you updated yeah and another sure. another player awesome that's had a, a long journey that really has <laughs> <laughs> that's true flown under the radar is uh no other than Dwayne Holmes yeah. so if you're not familiar Maybe. Dwayne Holmes uh has has recently been playing with Scunthrop United uh, in League One, or at least was last year. He's yeah. been to a bunch of different clubs over his, his short career so far. Mm-hmm. But he's 23 and currently just moved to uh, Derby County this summer in the championship. So, you know, Frank Lampard's the, the manager there. That's right. Was the one who brought him in. Has, has said some, some kind words about him yeah. so far. I don't yeah. know, Pat, if you can remember any off the top of your head yeah, from the article we've, we were reading That's earlier. Right. Yeah, <laughs> trying to do a little research on Dwayne Holmes for you guys. But yeah, it looks like he's a pretty... Again, one of those players who can fit in multiple positions and uh, very, very attacking as well, and just kind of, kind of fit him in the midfield. And it sounds like the philosophies that um, Lampard has for the team and his kind of idea going forward matches really well with uh, Dwayne. So it'll That's be so. interesting to see. It's a step up because he's he's been at Scunthorpe I think since 2016. So okay, I think it's time for him to prove himself on the next stage. Yeah, and he was originally from I think Huddersfield yeah. Academy. We saw as well. So. Just some, I guess, background on him. But he's he's been to a bunch of different clubs throughout his career. So good for him, finally uh, moving up to the championship. And hopefully, you know, he uh, gets some playing time for Frank at yeah. Derby County. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll keep monitoring him. And uh, finally, we have two more players, two of our That's favorite right. players that we saved for last. The regulars. The, the regulars. regulars. <laughs> of, of course. How, how else can we describe them <laughs> at this point? And that would be uh, Wes McKinney. So Wes McKinney actually played the second half of Schalke's friendly uh, against Fiorentina this past weekend and scored his first goal for Schalke. Ooh. Now, it was a friendly game, so, you know, bear that in mind. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a nice goal. So he got on the end of a, a cross, um, just running upfield and, you know, finishing, you know, at the goal, finishing oh, yeah. his run in front of goal and uh, just beat everyone uh, off the line, essentially. Nice. Got right in behind and just, you know, tapped in a goal. That's good um, to see. It was, it, it was a really, yeah, it was a really nice goal. Good to see that he's scoring. Yeah, but, be- um, because yeah. I know we were touching on it a little bit just last season as he was playing more defensive or even possible testing yeah. of center backs, but maybe that will be good to just show his, his uh, you know, skill going forward. Yeah, I, I think right. that's where he's got to play this year for Schalke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just getting a little, little, con- I'm getting a little concerned. I guess would be the best way to say it because throughout the uh, the preseason he hasn't really been 
the first choice, uh, you know, center mid for Schalke. He's kind of come on in the second half of games or has played, That's you know, the, the off games for, for Schalke just because they have some new players coming in. Omar Mascaral is a player they got from Frankfurt who plays pretty much exactly the same position as Wes McKinney. Uh, you know, also Nabil uh, Bentaleb they still have and just a few more players in West McKinney's position. So that's something to keep in mind. However, you know, Weston's still very young, 19 right. years old. He's, young. Yeah. He's uh, Domenico's boy, I would say, at this point. Oh, yeah. He's someone that, you know, Domenico trusts and, and sees potential in. Um, and Domenico actually just signed uh, a new contract extension. So he'll be oh, at sweet. Schalke that's for a, a little bit. That's good news. Yeah. For the Schalke Americans. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. They're, they're in <laughs> U23s right now. True, true. And I guess Zion Jones, he's at the U19 level. But, that's true. Um, yeah. So, uh, so good for Weston McKinney, finally getting on the score sheet for Schalke. Let's see if he can keep up, uh, you know, some of this good form Let's that he's go. had. And uh, yeah, the final player we want to talk about now is none other than Tim Weah. So, so what a weekend and what, I guess, a start to the season for Tim Weah. Really has really an impact, Austin. Yeah, he's, he's really made an impact in the ICC, which we, you know, watch pretty much every game oh, that yeah. he played. And then he also made a, scored a goal last weekend uh, against Monaco in the, I guess it's, I'm not yeah. sure exactly what it's called, but it's the, the Super Cup for, for French, Cup for or for yeah, France. Yeah, I forget what it's called, French too. League. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, he scored a goal in that game. Uh, PSG went on to win that game. And then he also scored a goal uh, for PSG this opening weekend uh, against Caen. Uh, he scored the third goal. It was a very was gritty the, uh, goal, too. So. Was that the, uh, the Carius? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, kind of. So, so I guess Caen's goalkeeper kept the ball too long. And uh, Tim, you know, using his pace, using his speed and athleticism instinct. was uh, well, instinct. Yeah, I guess I guess instinct. Yeah, yeah that fits. And uh, yeah, it was just pressuring the goalkeeper and ended up getting a foot uh, in front of the kick from the goalkeeper <laughs> uh, right into the net. Ooh. So hey, what a way to, to score your Tim. first goal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the celebration was nice, too. He didn't actually, you know, try to roll and uh, fall. Oh, or yeah. Or try yeah. to knee slide, I guess it was, and then yeah, fall. Into a <laughs> but he, uh, he took his shirt off and, uh, you know, was getting hyped. Getting hyped with the crowd. But, yeah. So, so cool we're to see. We were hyped as well. We were very hyped, yeah. So, so cool to see Tim Weah, uh, you know, opening his, his scoring account, I guess. Because uh, I guess last weekend he kind of did it, too, because that's a... That was a, an actual game. It wasn't a, a preseason game. But that's his first goal in, in Liegun. So, you know, hopefully more to come this season. We're expecting big things from Tim Weah, um, especially if he gets the playing time that Thomas Tuchel seems to be, you know, interested in yeah. giving him. Looks so, like no loan, so. Yeah, I would say there, I, I don't think there'll be a loan yeah. at, at this point. So we'll see. It's, it's Tim Weah's, uh, you know, career time, right now. Yeah, time or, to shine. Yeah, time to shine. So that's it for this segment. Now let's move over to uh, our quick kick segment. And now, you guys already know what time it is. It's the last segment here, Austin. That's right. And that's none other than quick kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall. All right, guys, so the first player we want to cover today in this segment is Sebastian Soto. So Sebastian is an 18-year-old striker, recently from the Real Salt Lake Academy, and he will be moving over to Hanover 96, where fellow American player Chris Gloucester right. currently plays. And both of them will be playing for their U19 team this upcoming season. And some unfortunate news for DeAndre Yedlin in Newcastle. 2-1 uh, loss to Tottenham, but more concerning, DeAndre left uh, with a left knee injury, and he actually was seen uh, with with crutches coming off. Mm. So that's pretty concerning and we'll keep you guys up to date. And Jonathan Amon finally made his return to the field this week for FC Nordsjöland, playing 11 minutes in their game over the weekend. And we have uh, another striker we were excited about with his first start for Fortuna Sittard and that's uh, Novakovic. And so he, he got, played the whole 90 minutes. So that will be exciting and hopefully can produce more goals throughout the season. That's right. And finally, we have two players who are moving abroad this summer, and they're uh, a little bit younger. And the first one is Ethan Bayer. So Ethan is moving from IMG's academy in Florida over to uh, Rio Vallecano uh, in La Liga. So he's 16, year old, uh, 16 years old and a defender. So definitely someone to keep your eyes on. We also have an uh, exciting, uh, for, uh, for my team back here, an academy player. And that's uh, none other than Matteo Rattaccio, if I'm pronouncing that right? I believe Rattaccio. so. Rattaccio. Um, yeah, and he came from a club actually in New York that uh, we're fairly familiar with, and that's B.W. Gashi. 
if I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, they're kind of in that echelon of PDA and some of those others, developmental uh, academies that looks like they're producing some solid players. So he's another 17-year-old midfielder, I believe, playing with the Liverpool U18s to start. And uh, we'll be excited to see where he goes. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And also make sure to check out our Instagram and Twitter. We've been putting oh, out some yeah. great content as always. That's right. And don't forget to leave a comment. We'd love to interact with you guys. And I think, uh, you know, that last part of the show, how we end this, uh, you That's know, one right. day as this, this cycle, the new cycle arises here, what's going to happen? I think one day we will win the Elusive World Cup.